So a lot of people have been saying that the Charlie Hebdo cartoons, while they have the right to say them, that they shouldn't have been saying it because their cartoons are maybe a little too racist. Here's what Chris Hayes has to say about it. When I first heard about the murders of the magazine's office, I remember the controversy nearly 10 years ago over Danish cartoons mocking the prophet Muhammad. At the time, I thought those cartoons were stupid, offensive. A lot of them were racist. And that if I were running a magazine, I wouldn't publish them, nor would I offer praise to those who did. They seemed to me a largely pointless prank. But upon seeing today's murders, I admit to reconsidering. I can't help but feel that what happened today retroactively ennobled the sometimes offensive cartoons published in Charlie Hebdo and other places because ma the magazine Hebdo and its staff were actually genuinely subject to violent reprisal. Reprisal they stood up against courageously and at tremendous cost, a cost we are seeing today. And standing up against violent intimidation, that is noble, even if the cartoons themselves may not always be. Now, the thing I don't get about Chris Hayes is he said he didn't like their cartoons before because he didn't think they were really threatened. But we all knew that they were really threatened. I mean, for decades, there's been a fatwa on Salman Rushdie. There was the guy killed in Holland. And then their offices were firebombed. So I don't know what Chris Hayes is talking about. And by the way, why you got to slam their satir satirical content at the same time you're sticking up for them? It's been happening a lot. And people have been saying that the, Char including Glenn Greenwald, who I love and respect, has been saying that the Charlie Hebdo cartoons are often bigoted and racist. And the one they point to is this cartoon of the girls who were raped by Boko Haram and it has a picture of them holding the wow we want our welfare checks and it's the most negative portrayal of African women ever so what they were doing in that cartoon was they weren't making fun of Africans or the Boko Haram girls and calling them welfare queens they were aiming that satire at the right wing in France because that's the way the right wing in France sees those girls girls who are obviously victims and need help they see them as moochers and freeloaders and a lower class of society so they were lampooning the right wing in France with that satirical cartoon they weren't being racist and they weren't being bigoted that's the equivalent of watching Stephen Colbert and going God that Stephen Colbert is a real nut job right winger it means you don't get it he's being satirical He's lampooning those crazy ideas and beliefs, just like Charlie Hebdo was doing in that cartoon. And it's amazing how almost everyone who's looked at that cartoon has got it wrong, except for me, because I guess I'm a professional comedian and not a professional egghead who doesn't get comedy professionally. One more thing, people say, why would you want to do something to offend all of 1.8 billion Muslims who obviously don't agree with these extremists? Why do you want to draw a cartoon and do something that offends religious people and en masse? Why would you do that? Because that's what satirists do. There's no such thing as a respectful, satirical cartoon. Satirists always, always are disrespectful and they expose a larger truth. The person I want to aim my satire at is the rank and file Christian, the rank and file Muslim, I, a person who follows Islam. I don't aim my satire at the Pope or bishops, although I'm often making fun of them. I want my satire to hit the regular person. It's the moderate person who a joke will have an effect on. For a moderate, they'll hear a joke, maybe take a second and go, oh yeah. This doesn't make sense what I'm thinking. This is a superstition. This is incongruent and contradictory. Thanks to that satirical joke, I'm now seeing things a little bit different. Extremists never get satire. That's why they're killing people. So let's remember, if a joke offends a lot of people over their religious beliefs, to a real comedian and satirist, that's a win. That's a big win. And is your religion so delicate, so weak need that a cartoon from a comedian in another country can keep you up at night? Oh my God, you think you have the key to the world. You have the key to the universe, everlasting life in heaven, but something a comedian says, some crappy cartoon is gonna piss you off and make you kill somebody or offend you and make you not be able to sleep at night. That's your problem. That's because it touches that part of your brain that you really doubt what you claim to believe. And that's why it bothers you if you really thought you were going to heaven. And that was the truth.
If you really thought that your religion was the truth, there's nothing a comedian would say that would bother you whatsoever. You would ignore it, but you don't ignore it because it touches that part in your brain that you've been trying to suppress, that part that you secretly doubt, your own belief system. So I hope I cleared it up. Charlie Hebdo, their Boko Haram cartoon, not racist, Glenn Greenwald got it wrong. Everybody, Chris Hayes has gotten it wrong. Everybody who tries to interpret satire from another culture is getting it wrong, just like the people who didn't understand Stephen Colbert or people who watch All in the Family and think that Archie Bunker is really racist. They don't understand that he's a caricature. That satire, that was Norman Lear lampooning that guy who thinks like that, just like Charlie Hebdo was lampooning people who thought like that about the Boko Haram. Okay, I'll, that's it. I'm not explaining it anymore. I'll see you next time in church.